Hey guys, and welcome to the first part of my big AudioQuest cables review. So in this video, I'm going to be taking a look at three other speaker cables, namely the Type 4, the Rocket 33, and the Rocket 44. And before I begin this video, first let me throw out this big disclaimer, and that is, well, I realize how sensitive of a topic cables can be. In fact, just bringing up the subject is like asking for war. In fact, wars have been started for less. Still, if you're somebody who thinks this whole thing is hogwash, if the idea of spending money on aftermarket cables just makes your blood boil, that's actually okay. But clearly this video is just not really going to be for you. So instead of watching this and getting angry with the world, just go watch something like a cute red panda video or puppies or something of that sort because life is too short to really get caught up in things like this. But if you are curious about how these cables sound and how they stack up to other products, then keep on watching because this is going to be a fun review. So let's kick things off by talking about the methodology that I used to evaluate these products. And guys, it was actually really straightforward. So first what I'm going to do is I'm going to focus on my reference points. And the first reference point is going to be 16 gauge tributaries wired that cost like 69 cents a foot. So pretty affordable stuff, pretty real world stuff, stuff that I think a lot of people actually use at home. Following that, we have QED silver cables, which have a very fast sound. They represent more of a typical audiophile cable. And my reference point is going to be the MIT CVT2 cables, which I've had since 2009. So those are my reference points. As for the evaluation process, like I said, it's pretty simple. I have over a dozen speakers in this house. I have nearly the same amount of components. So what I would do is I just take the cables, connect it to the different gear, and I would listen. And what I would listen for is consistency. I wanted to make sure that whatever I connected to these systems, that there would be a certain signature that would follow essentially the cable. So that's essentially what I did. That's in fact what I found out with these cables. So with that being said, let's talk about how they sound and let's kick things off by looking at the Type 4. Alright guys, so here it is, the AudioQuest Type 4 speaker cable. Now before I go over things like its build quality and how it sounds, I first want to briefly touch upon its history because, believe it or not, there's a little bit of lineage to the Type 4. And that's because variations of the Type 4 have been made for over 30 years, which is crazy because that means in a roundabout way the Type 4 is as old, if not even older, than myself. So yeah, that's a little crazy. Now, as far as AudioQuest goes, they basically have two goals when it comes to their speaker cables. Number one is to achieve low noise floor, and number two is to achieve relative linearity, which means the cable is designed to not really color the sound in any distinct way. Now, obviously, the more affordable a product is, usually the more it's going to color the sound. But we're going to get to that in a bit. First, let's look at the build quality, and by and large, yeah, it's built as well as you'd expect an expensive aftermarket cable to be. Uh, it's going to be relatively flexible, so if you have bookshelf speakers or if you have some tight spaces and you need to kind of funnel the cables around some corners, this is very easy to work with. The connectors come in either silver or gold. It basically depends on what kind of sound you want, really. Uh, they sent me the silver connectors, which are supposed to give you a more open, dynamic, lively presentation. The plugs are fine. The only complaint I'd have is there's going to be these little stickers here, and that's all they are, stickers. And they can easily unwrap, I've noticed. But otherwise, everything seems to be built pretty well. One of the cool things is that AudioQuest has each cable designated, essentially. So you have your left cable, you have your right cable, and there's even arrows pointing to how you want to connect these to your system. So ultimately, it's built pretty well, no complaints there, so now let's talk about how it sounds. Alright guys, so when you get right down to it, whenever you lay a lot of money down on something like a speaker cable, and I'd imagine for a lot of you, the Type 4 would represent one of your first aftermarket cables, you want to hear the difference. You want to be able to take the Pepsi challenge again and again and again and be able to recognize this cable over your standard 16 gauge wire. And by and large, man, I gotta say, it should be very easy for just about anybody 
to hear the difference between something like this and your run-of-the-mill Home Depot wire. Now, as far as sound quality is concerned, I would say that the Type 4 has a very open, dynamic, very, very clean presentation. The noise floor is exceptionally low for the money. Uh, so what that really means is that when you listen to your system with this cable in place, if you have lesser quality wire, what's going to happen is all the musical notes are going to seem to come from a blacker background and every just seems more isolated, a little cleaner, a little easier to discern. Now, Overall, I would say these cables have a sound that rests towards the slightly forward side of neutral. Now, one of the things that I've never really liked about AudioQuest products in the past, because I've owned quite a few of them, ironically enough to include uh, iteration of the Type 4 from 10 years ago, is that they usually have kind of this grainy, rough-sounding top end that just never really sounded very natural and kind of rough on the ears, especially compared to similar priced products from the likes of Audience or Kimber or whoever. And I'm proud to say, or I should say happy, to report that the current Type 4 doesn't really suffer from that issue. I didn't hear any coarseness whatsoever. Again, it is going to be pushed a little forward into treble region, a little forward into upper mid-range region, but it's not not offensive in any way. There's just going to be a little bit on top. Bass is going to be very quick, very tight, very clean. And overall, this is a lively sounding cable that is fantastic for somebody who says, man, I want to hear my investment. I really do like a lively sound. Or maybe if somebody who says, man, I, I like the tone of my system, but it's a little too laid back. It's a little too warm. I need to give it some life. Then the Type 4 is going to be a great option. So all in all, yeah, Type 4. My expectations were genuinely pretty low with this cable. I thought I knew what I was getting into with it, but I'm pleasantly surprised it does sound pretty good for what it is. So now let's talk about the bigger Rocket 33. Alright guys, so here's the Rocket 33, and as you can tell, it's a much bigger cable than the smaller, more nimble Type 44, which means even though you can still sneak this cable around corners, it's going to be a little bit more difficult to work with than the nimble Type 4. Now, as far as the differences between the Type 4 and the Rocket 33, there's going to be two major things. Number one is going to be the purity of the coppers used in the Rocket 33. Apparently, the Rocket 33 copper is ultra super duper pure. I'm not even going to try to repeat the types of copper they use because it's just going to come across as a crazy advertisement for them. And number two is going to be, well, you just get more copper. Otherwise, as far as I know, the insulation materials are going to be similar. The geometry is going to be relatively similar as well. Now, when it comes to sound quality, this is where things get interesting because the noise floor is even better on this cable than on a Type 4, which means notes really just come out of this pitch black background and it's really cool because in a lot of respects they keep up with my much more expensive MIT cables in that one regard. Now where it gets really interesting though is the profile. The Type 4 is on the forward side of neutral whereas the Rocket 33 has this bigger sound to it. It's bigger, it's richer, it's fuller, there's a lot more meat on the bone, uh, but it's warmer. It's distinctly a lot warmer sounding than the Type 4. The bass is quite uh, full sounding, maybe even borderline just a little bit on the heavy side of neutral. And the top end is actually not quite as aggressive as the Type 4. If anything, it might be rolled off a little bit. So this is a wonderful cable for somebody who says, man, I love the sound of my system, but I wish there was a little more meat on the bone. Uh, and I wish the top end was not as bright. So if you're in that position, then the Rocket 33 would actually be a good cable. And I got to be honest with you guys, I do have some aggressive sounding speakers. So when I throw the Rocket 33 on them, it's actually just what the doctor ordered. So believe it or not, I actually really like the Rocket 33, but it does have a very distinctly warm, rounded profile to it. And that brings me to the Rocket 44. All right, guys, so this is the Rocket 44, and the biggest differences between the Rocket 33 and the Rocket 44 is going to be, number one, the fact that this cable uses even higher quality copper conductors. In fact, they're so pure that the only way you can get anything better is to have something blessed by the Pope. And number two, because of the color of the cable, you could probably put this thing in the grass and fool somebody into thinking it's a snake for all of like a second or two. Now let's talk about how it sounds. And overall, just imagine a cable that takes what I said about the Type 4 and then what I said about the Rocket. 33 and just put it all together and then you got a Rocket 44 and ultimately what this results in is a very balanced sounding cable because you have this liveliness to the top end that isn't 
so extreme to where it may limit you to certain types of systems. You have a very full, meaty mid-range that's not overdone, but it never sounds thin. And then you have bass that's also very full, but now it's not going to be quite as slow sounding as the Rocket 33. And overall, this cable comes closest to matching what AudioQuest sets out to do, which is A, to produce something with low noise floor, and B, to give you something that's very balanced and linear sounding. And while I wouldn't necessarily call the Rocket 33 a uh, Rocket 44, or excuse me, a linear sounding cable. It definitely is a very balanced sounding cable. It's definitely the most audiophile cable of the bunch. And unsurprisingly, it's also my favorite of the bunch. The only downside, well, if you want this kind of balanced performance from them, you gotta pay for it. I was sent an eight foot pair, which retails for $439. Overall, I mean, this is great for somebody who's looking for this type of performance. I mean, you gotta pay to play. Otherwise, though, that's going to be my take on the Rocket 44, which leads me to my final thoughts on all of the cables. Nice. All right, guys, there you have it. And all in all, I really like the direction that AudioQuest is taking with regards to the sound of their products. It's definitely getting a little smoother on top, a little more natural sounding. And what impresses me the most about these three products is their unique performance envelope, which will fit a different type of customer. For example, if you're somebody who says, man, my system sounds a little flat. I wish it sounded a little bit more lively. I wish the bass was tighter. Get the Type 4. You're going to love that cable. Or if you're on the opposite end of the spectrum and you think your system's maybe a little too bright or a little too thin sounding get the rocket 33 it's definitely going to add a lot of meat on the bone and it's going to smoothen over the top end and then if you said well i would like a little bit of both that's what the rocket 33 is for that's going to be more of your typical audiophile cable that's aiming for neutrality and balance so all in all they're really good products and i think as long as you put them in the right type of system you're going to enjoy them anyways that's just my take on these cables guys i look forward to posting up part two which is where i'm going to talk about their interconnects but until then you all take it easy, and until next time, peace.